Hey, October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the Copperhead. We got some interesting facts for you coming up. Hey, the Copperhead, it just may be the cure for breast cancer. Bangs in your face. Subscribe now. Hey, a big Venom Central thank you to Wally Tucker, Peter Carmici, hey, and Len Brewer. Thank you so much, Len. We love you so much. We hope to get to see you soon, Len. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, it being October and this being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I know you, a lot of, of y'all are probably seeing a lot of these posts that people are putting up about the Copperhead and what it's doing for breast cancer. And, and we're gonna hit on some of that and, and, and give you the facts on, on what's going on. And now we're gonna start out just with some basic stuff about copperheads. For y'all that ain't snake people. <laughs> so, I mean the copperhead. This is a snake that is, I mean, when you hear copperhead, you immediately think, oh, dangerous venomous snake and thing. And that's really not the case. They actually are a mildly toxic venomous snake. I think there's been, they average maybe about two to three thousand bites per year because they're very prolific and there is a lot of them and the death rate the actual fatalities on that is very minute i mean a fatality from a copperhead bite is very rare and the facts are i think there's been like only four or five fatalities in the past 20 years so it's not a deadly animal and even though it's demonized by by the public it's it, 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 it's really not and what and with the copperhead, now, here in the good old U.S. of A., you know, our, our Native American copperheads, you know, we used to have like five distinct subspecies. Um, if I can remember off the top of my head, we had the, we had the northern copperhead, the southern copperhead, um, the Osage copperhead, um, the broadbanded copperhead, and the Transpecos copperhead. But just recently here, actually a, a very old and dear friend of mine, Tim Geyer, he did his thesis on on copperheads and it just got I'm pretty sure it just got done last year where the taxonomy actually changed because of Tim's thesis and he I remember he ran all over the country collecting specimens and and, and taking DNA samples and he proved that they actually are two species and it's broken down into just the the eastern copperhead okay which which is comprised of like your northern your southern and your Osage copperhead, and your western copperheads, which are your Transpecos and your Latticinctus, which is your broadband copperhead. So they're they're broken down into two species now. You know, and what's interesting, and in, in my friend Tim's thesis that you know got him his PhD in herpetology, you know, he, he, he distinguished how how a certain set of copperheads have the same DNA marker than the other set. You know, our our end over here on the on the East Coast have the same marker, and it's a little different from the actual Texas copperhead. So that's what distinguishes and separates them into two species. And I remember Tim working on this. He, he ran all over the country collecting specimens and collecting DNA samples from copperheads from all over. And, and, he, and he proved it. And actually, it, it, it has been changing taxonomy. Just I think it was just last year. His, his thesis, and it, 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 it's been confirmed, and it's, it's a proven fact what we're going to talk about with their venom and their components which copperhead venom may not be as toxic as a lot of our other north american snakes here but you know it's largely a hemolytic venom and we found that it has traces of myotoxic components in its venom also which is which is tissue damaging but the thing is with copperheads is they're so plentiful and they're such a prolific animal we have plenty of them and we actually have both species here to show you now the important one in this film is going to be this one this is the southern copperhead okay and this is the medically significant snake right now yeah i'll lift her up a little bit babe this is the little southern copperhead and this and i've got them in these bins because they're they're flighty they're they're squirrely little little rascals so and they don't hang real well on a hook, but 
is that little rascal right there. And this is a young female, and we just got her on a on a snake removal just a few days ago. So, all right, girl, we get back on in there. We'll film you in the tub. And that is your AKA Eastern Copperhead, okay? And then you have your Western Copperhead or the Achistrodon Latisinctus, which, which is now the dominant race of the West, the broadbanded Copperhead. <laughs> but, and we have that one. And he's even worse than that one is. This one's really flighty, but he's a big healthy boy. We've raised this one from a little baby, but he's a big thick boy. All right, let's set him down there real quick and we will just pan down for the animals. Let's cover him while I'm talking. But the copperhead is actually a very prolific snake. You know, and interestingly enough, you know, when I say copperheads are very prolific, it's one of the few snakes that it's a proven fact that this snake actually undergoes a phenomenon that we call parthenogenic birth. That means it has babies on its own. Females can literally do this without a male present. I mean, it's incredible. And is that why they're so prolific? And <laughs> I've read a recent study and, and, and some recent scientific journal papers where they've done a study on like 22 different copperheads in a wild, female Achistrodon contortrix, which is our southern copperhead, or also known as the eastern copperhead, where the ones that were gravid, they actually proved that one out of every 22 was a parthenogenic birth. And there's males present, but they're totally denying the male and they're having birth on their own. And it's been studied in the lab and it's been proven in the lab time and time again, with the copperhead. This snake has the capability of parthenogenic birth and it's more prevalent than we think. And the thing is, is if this species of copperhead proves to be an aid in a cure for cancer, it's gonna be a very medically significant animal. So think about it before y'all cut one in half with a shovel or run them over <laughs> or kill them. Because this little guy right here just might be the animal that helps save a family member someday and, and help halt the growth of breast cancer cells. So interesting stuff, but we're gonna hit on how this works and just what's going on in the clinical studies with the Southern Copperhead. Contortrostatin, it's what we call a CPP, okay? That's a cell penetrating peptide. And that's what's being extracted out of the Southern Copperhead venom and is placed in use with cancer cells, with breast cancer cells, human breast cancer cells to be exact. And what it does is it binds itself to that cell and stops the growth of it. So it's interesting stuff that they're doing and it's, it's still all under clinical trials. I don't believe that this is anywhere near, you know, being able to be used on patients yet. But I know here in the US, it's, it's being used on, on lab mice and it's proving to be very, very effective. So that's like a huge step towards using it on next on human trials, which would be outstanding for breast cancer patients. And an interesting fact, it's also stopping the migration and the growth of other kind of tumors. So, you know, CPPs, they're found in a lot of different venomous animals and applied in different areas in medical science. So before you kill that next snake, think about that. <laughs> You know, I mean, our ecosystem is providing us with something that will help us live. So we got to start protecting our natural world and protecting our animals, protecting the snakes, because it's the drugstore. It's nature's drugstore. And if we just go ahead and wipe them out like they're doing in the damn rattlesnake roundups, you never know where we're going to end up. Okay. Because who knows what the Western Diamondback, the Protoss Atrox, what they may find in that in the near future. And it's getting harder and harder to find westerns around sweet water. So it's just fascinating what this snake is capable of. So, I mean, it's definitely a great resource for mankind. You know, not only from its venom, but from a scientific standpoint to do things that we think aren't possible. You know, parthenogenic birth. I mean, who knows what the future holds in the copperhead. So, <laughs> that's my crocodile. <laughs> He's like, pay me some attention over here, huh? Just a short one today, guys. 
But I think for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it being October, we all need to salute the Southern Copperhead. So hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that V logo thing and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out in Venom Central. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.